while we have used PCA uh, for visualization, where we took a 784 dimensional data set and we converted it into a two dimensional data set and visualize this 2D on, uh, on a 2D plane, like a first principal component on this and second principal component on this. This is what we did a while ago. But there are other applications of PCA where we want to go from 784 dimensions to let's say 10 dimensions. Uh, these applications are when you're training machine learning models. So this happens a lot. This is mostly for data visualization, right? While you might want to go from 784 dimensions using PCA to, to 10 dimensions when you're training machine learning models. We will learn about machine learning models and training a little later in the, in the future chapters. But there is a case where you might want to convert your data from 784 dimensions to something greater than two. If it's two or three, it's mostly for data visualization, right? But if it's like 10 or 20 or two, even 200, right? This dimensionality, D dash, we are going from D to D dash and all we need is that D dash is less than or equal to D, right? So we do, we do have situations in machine learning where we want to go from uh, a D dimension to D dash, but D dash is not two or three. Two or three is mostly for visualization as, as I just stated, right? So there are cases, again, I'll not be able to give you all the context on where we do it. I promise you, I will give you uh, the context on where we exactly do this to 10 dimensions or 20 dimensions or 200 dimensions, etc. when we learn machine learning models. But since we are learning PCA right now, I thought I'll cover the topic, but the applications of it we will learn when we learn machine learning models later, uh, later, in, this, later in this course, okay? So imagine, imagine now that I want to go from uh, 784 dimensional data to let's say 200 dimensions. How do I do it? Now the question is how do I do it? It's very simple, right? I have a data matrix X, right? Which is let's say 15,000 points cross 784 points. Okay. Or let's instead of taking instead of taking numbers here. Okay. Now, if I multiply this matrix, if I multiply this with another matrix, let me call this matrix V. Okay, this V is, let's say 784 cross 200. This V is composed of the top 200 eigenvectors. Okay, each of my eigenvectors. So, if I take covariance matrix of X, if I take covariance matrix of X, let's see, let's say that this is my covariance matrix. Let's assume X is already standardized just for simplicity. Okay, so this is my covariance matrix and for this covariance matrix, I can compute uh, 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 my eigenvalues and eigenvectors where I goes from, where I goes from 1 to 784. The largest one, let's say is lambda 1. Similarly here, I goes from 1 to 784, right? The, la the largest vector, the, the largest, uh, the eigenvector corresponding, the largest eigenvalue is V1. So if I, if I make my matrix V such that my first eigenvector, my top eigenvector is here. And each of my eigenvector, remember, each of my eigenvector belongs to a 784 dimension space, right? If my second eigenvector is written like this, so on and so forth, my 200th eigenvector is written like this. Now this matrix is 784 cross 200, right? Now this, this, now by doing this, Right by 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 stacking up each of my eigenvectors, I created a matrix which is 784 cross 200. Now, if I multiply these two, if I multiply x with v, if I multiply x with v, what do I get? I get let me call it new x dash, which is 15k cross 200. This is my representation of my data points x in a 200 dimensional space. By the way, this is what we exactly did, even for two dimensions, where I just had instead of 200 right this is how we convert our data from 784 dimensions to 200 dimensions using PCA okay now since we understood how what it is now the big question that often pops up that often pops up is what is the right number a lot of times I want to go from 784 should I go to 10 or should I go to 20 dimensions should I go to 50 dimensions 100 dimensions 200 dimensions or 500 dimensions or 700 dimensions. Okay, this, see, it, it's mostly two or three when you want to do visualization. When you don't want to do visualization, what is the right number? That's a big question mark that we all have. Now let's go to the fundamentals of what PCA is. 
in PCA, if you if you recall all the mathematics that we that that we worked on, we are trying to maximize the variance of projected points. The, the fundamental the fundamental mathematical detail here is trying to maximize the variance of projected points right so pca in in, in it, at its core is a variance maximization technique we want to retain as much variance as possible now the question is if i go from 784 dimensions to 10 dimensions how much of the variance how much of the original variance let me put it that way how much of the original variance is explained when I go from 784 to 10 dimensions, which means how much of the variance is explained just by 10 dimensions. C can we get a sense of that? Right? Because if I can put numbers here, I know whether I, then I can make a choice whether I should go to 10 dimensions or 20 dimensions or 30 dimensions or 200 dimensions or 700 dimensions. Because our whole objective was maximizing variance of the projected points. If I can somehow put a numerical value, then I can decide what is the right number here. That's where eigenvalues will be used. Recall, when we did PCA, right? When we computed PCA for a given matrix X, we computed its covariance matrix. For the covariance matrix, we computed its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The problem lies here. We use the eigenvectors to, to go to lower dimensions, but we never use the eigenvalues. There is a very nice mathematical interpretation of eigenvalues, which is beautiful. Okay, so let's assume lambda 1, lambda 2, so on, lambda 784, okay, for our 784 dimensional data set are, of course, if, if you have D dimensions, it's not 784, it's D here, but I'm just flowing with the, with the MNIST example that we've been playing around with, okay. So imagine if I have, so let's assume, of course, that lambda 1 is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to, right, so this is my largest eigenvalue, second largest, so on, so forth. At any time, suppose if I, if, I, if I take my data set from 784 dimensions, let's say to 10 dimensions. Now I want to understand what is the variance, what is the variance that is already explained or retained in 10 dimensions. If this is the question I have, it's a very simple formula for this. Take the top 10 eigenvalues, okay, divide it by the summation of all the eigenvalues since the matrix since the covariance matrix is 784 cross 784 you have 784 eigenvalues now this ratio see here i am taking the sum of the first top 10 eigenvalues dividing by, by the summation of all the eigenvalues this tells me what is the percentage this tells me what is the percentage of variance explained suppose this let's say this number is let's say let's say, i'm just picking up a number here Let's say this number is 0 0.2. What this means is that 20%, the 20% of the variance, of the total variance, of the total variance in 784 dimensions is explained. I'm writing it just is explained in 10 dimensions. Okay, what this says is only 20% of the whole information because we said variance is a nice measure of information. Only 20% of the information has been retained or explained when I project it to 10 dimensions. If you're okay with it, 10 is a good number. If you say, uh, oftentimes what people tell is, when I want to go from 784 dimensions to D dash dimensions, I might through PCA, I want to find a D dash which retains 90% of information or 90% of variance, right? Now, we have to find the right D dash, okay, which, 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 which retains 90% of the information. And how do we do it? We want to find lambda 1, lambda 2, so on and so forth. Lambda D dash by summation over all i, lambda i, we want this to be 0.9. We want to find a D dash such that this ratio is 0.9. Then 90% of the information or variance is explained using uh, using PCA, right? So let's go and see some simple code for our MNIST data set, okay? So here, what I'm doing here is, again, I'm just flowing with the flow here. It's the same, it's the same uh, uh, IPython notebook that I'm using. 
I'm just saying that instead of two components, I want to compute all the 784 components. And on my sample data, if you recall, this is, uh, this is an extension of our previous exercise. Here, uh, we use scikit-learn to compute our uh, PCA, um, and I'm, ju I'm just flowing, there, flowing with that, okay? Now, in instead of rewriting all the code again, I thought it's better if I, if I just continue here. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm saying a number of components is 784, which means I want a 784 dimensional transformation. So I'm going from 784 dimensions to 784 dimensions, except that these are principal components and this is given features, okay, using PCA. Now I'm transforming my data. So what PCA gives you is PCA has a variable after you fit the transform, there's something called PCA.explained variance. Okay, it literally gives you uh, what, what is the, uh, what is the variance that is explained, which is nothing but your lambda i values, if you think about it. This is nothing but your eigenvalues. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm dividing the PCA explained variance by sum of PCA explained variables. So this is nothing but your lambda i by sigma of lambda i, okay, for each i. This is what I'm doing, right, for each i. Now I'm doing a cumulative sum, okay. So, uh, so all of this is stored in a percentage variance explain, which says for each fee, for each principal component i, what percentage has it? Uh, so lambda one. So what I have here is lambda one by lambda i, lambda two by sigma lambda i, lambda three by sigma lambda i, so on and so forth. That's what I have in this uh, uh, in this in this vector. Now I'm doing a cumulative sum of this, so that my first value is. Okay, using only the first eigenvector, what is my value? In the second, since I'm doing a cumulative sum, I'm doing lambda one plus lambda two by summation of lambda i. This, this is the numpy dot cumulative sum. It keeps adding, right? My third value is lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three by summation of lambda i and so on and so forth. So here I've, I've summed everything which is here and before that. And after that, it's simple code to plot all of this. Nothing very fancy. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Now this plot, this plot is very, very interesting. Okay. My x-axis is number of components or number of principal components that I want to use. And my y-axis is cumulative variance explained. Now one thing that you will quickly notice is 20% of the variance is explained very, very quickly using just a few features. Now if I say that I want to go from 784 dimensions to 100 dimensions, which is somewhere here, Right, I'm going to explain somewhere around uh, 0.75. I'm just picking a number here, somewhere between 0 0.75 and 0 0.8. Right, roughly about 0 0.75 or 75 percent of my variance will be explained if I if I do if I go from 784 to 100. If I say I want to find the d dash, which explains roughly 90 percent of my variance. Now let's go to 90 percent where it is that roughly corresponds to 200 dimensions, roughly, right? This is roughly 0.9 and that corresponds to 200 here. So my D dash is 200. So if I go from 784 dimensions, if I project this data to 200 dimensions using PCA, roughly 90% of my information or 90% of the variance is explained, okay? Very simple code here, very simple code. This plot is super useful. In some cases, in some applications, as we'll see later when we learn machine learning models, you might say, I want, I want to preserve 95% of the information in my data. In such a case, you might have to pick a number that is, uh, that is probably around 350-ish, right? This is closer to 0.95 and this is 350, right? In such a case, this number might be closer to 350. But remember, you're throwing away almost, even if you pick 350 of the 784, this is less than half of 784, right? Which means half of your features are only adding 5% to your variance, okay? Even this is a significant reduction. Going from 784 to 350 is literally more than 50% reduction in your feature space. We'll see that this is useful when we learn machine learning models, I promise you. For now, just please take it at the face value.